how can we support them during this time? Because I know there's a lot of parents that I don't know if we're like the generation that started that of like the helicopter parenting and they want to like just micromanage a lot of their kids' lives. I see this a lot in some of my daughter's friends. And I'm like, dude, when they go off to college, you're going to have to like let them go. Any suggestions on how we can manage that, you know, with those hard conversations around them finding their identity while they're gone? What's up, everyone? If you're looking to be inspired, motivated, educated, and entertained, you have come to the right place. Welcome to the Bomb Mom Podcast, the podcast where we explore your fitness, life mindsets, and actions that help you become unstoppable. You're worth it, and it's time to finally make changes in your life that will last you the rest of your life. Welcome to the Bomb Mom Podcast, everyone. I am Melissa Vogel, your host. Welcome to the show. If you are returning, welcome back. If you are a brand new listener, I'm so glad that you have found this episode. Now, take note because this is going to be a good one that you want to pass on to people that have a college student, kids going off to college, or someone who just needs to improve their own overall life, wellness, well-being, fitness, mindset, everything. This episode is definitely for everyone. Now, we are talking about college kids in this episode. Oh my God, I can't believe it. I have a college kid going off this year, which is like insane. It just, it, like, how did this happen? How did, well, we know how it happened, but seriously, how did this happen? And so this topic is very near and dear to my heart right now, but God, it's so good. This episode is so good. You want to listen to it anyways, even if that's not your situation now, especially if you have younger kids, because guess what? One day you're going to be in this position, whether they're going off to college, whether they're going off getting there in the military or getting a job somewhere else, and, and they're leaving the nest, right? So this is going to help you prepare them now and do the right things now while they're young so you're not in a panic when they're leaving going oh my god did I prepare them was I a good role model are they ready to go so I love this episode okay so can we just talk about how amazing summer is right now again (laughs) I know I talk about it every week but I just love the summer and we have so many things going on in the bomb mom group you guys if you are not a part of my free VIP group get in I know I haven't talked about it in a while because I just I forget I do so many other things but I want you to get in my free VIP group. The link to that will be in the show notes. Sometimes we send out emails on it too. And at the bottom of the email, check it out because I think we have a little link to it there. But we want you to get in there. And it's a free group that I run on Facebook. You're going to see me live in there. I'm going to motivate you, push you. And who doesn't need that through the summer? So get in there because, you know, it's free. And then also make sure you're checking out my new website, www.melissavogelfitness.com. You can get more information on becoming a bomb mom. You can do our challenge. You can do online programs. Like, oh my God, there's just so many things. So get on there, check it out. I am here to help you guys. And if you don't know what direction to take, as always, book a call with me. I'm still doing them through the summer. It's just a fun discovery call. Let's figure out what you need, what you don't need, what direction you need to take, where do you need to back off from with everything, your health, your fitness, your mindset, all of it. And make sure you're checking out the website. We'll put a link to this in the show notes. I am doing individual coaching now. It is new to Melissa Vogel Fitness. You can work with me one-on-one and we are going to dive in. I've been testing this out with my current clients and I gave them first dibs and holy crap, are they blowing it out of the water because there's just no bullshit. Like if you're ready to change your life and we have to tackle certain issues, you need accountability, you need help with nutrition, you need specific workouts, like I am here for you. It's an all-in-one package. So book a discovery call for that too. If you're like, you know what, Melissa, I heard you talk about doing your one-on-one coaching. I think that might be a fit for me. Book a call. Let's talk about it. All right. So let's dive back into this show. And I'm excited about it because we talk so much about how important it is for us to take care of us so we can be the role model for our kids, send kids off to college the right way, help them become prepared. Because mental health and college, man, do you guys remember what that was like if you went to college? That can be an interesting 
time of life. And you don't have to go downhill. You know, you don't have to suffer. And when we went to college, we didn't have social media like this. So it's a whole nother struggle and ball game that these kids are trying to learn and navigate and deal with. And today's guest, Mia Nasenow, for 20 years, Mia worked as a mental health counselor at McAllister College in South Paul, Minnesota, seeing thousands of students for individual and group counseling. And McAllister is one of the most culturally diverse undergraduate colleges in the United States with students from every state in 99 countries, including many first generation college students. Now, in addition to one-on-one therapy, Mia has designed and facilitated innovative group therapy and mental health programming for college students. And she has presented at several national and regional professional conferences. Mia is passionate about young adults understanding themselves and find resources so that they can thrive. She holds a BA from Carleton College and an MA in counseling and student personal psychology from the University of Minnesota. Today we are talking about the one and only, it is the first and only comprehensive guide to mental and emotional health for college students. It's called The College Student's Guide to Mental Health. This book is so good. This is the book that you get to pass on to your kid, or there is an audio version too. So if you want to listen to it to help your child and then pass it on to them, you can. So we have all of it. We're going to put all the links to that in the show notes, you guys. This is awesome. Like, I'm so glad that we had her on and we're talking about this topic now before the kids go off to college. So check out the show notes. I can't wait to talk to you guys. Everyone enjoy the show. Hey everyone, welcome to the Bomb Mom Podcast. Today we have Mia Nasenow on. Welcome to the show, Mia. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk about this. <laughs> we are diving into college life today and mental health and helping those students prepare to go while they're there, helping probably mom and dad <laughs> prepare for them to be gone too. This is a topic like we have never talked about this before on the Bomb Mom podcast. And this is special because this year I have a daughter, which I can't even believe, but I have a daughter going off to college next year. And girl, I am nervous. But congratulations for making it to this point. <laughs> yes. Actually, just last night at their high school, we had signing night because she's on scholarship for volleyball. So that like just happened last night. So that was another like, oh my God, this is really happening moment. Yes. Pictures and the holding up the sweatshirt. and All of it. All of it. I had one of her college shirts on. I'm like, oh my God, this is happening. <laughs> So this is an important topic because it's just a new generation, a new shift. And I know we have a lot of moms that listen and dads and high school kids listen to this podcast, which is crazy. So I hope they listen to this episode too. But we just have a lot of people dealing with this stage of life. And I think too, even if you don't have a child going off to college, this is going to be a really good episode to listen to just overall for a parent having a child in any age, really. But you have the first and only comprehensive guide to mental and emotional health for college students. Like there's nothing else out there like this. That is true. I mean, it's some people would argue that there are other sources that have a chapter here and there on mental health, but my book is just on mental health and it really focuses on mental health and wellness and flourishing versus about mental illness. So it's the tools mm -hmm. that all students, the issues that students bring in over and over that really don't have to be labeled mental illness or get a diagnosis that they're sort of the really normal struggles that young people go through to figure out. Right, right. How to be happy. <laughs> well, and I love that word, like, it's like we're talking about it before it hits. And I think a lot of people talk about mental health after someone's suffering, and then they have the conversations, and then it's a topic that everyone talks about. But this is reverse, and I love it. I love that you're giving us a guide that we can address stuff and have open communication and conversations about something before they go into this new world and to help prevent things from happening as well. Thank you. That is exactly my hope for the book. Because I think in our society, we want to treat things, this is true for physical health too, after they have a problem. You know, solve the problem, cure it when it's, whereas prevention and what does day-to-day -day healthy living look like isn't given as much importance in the culture right. and in the systems. So Right. Okay. So I got to ask, I got to know, what motivated you to write this book? What, how did you get onto the topic of this? How'd you become the guru? 
Well, <laughs> thank you for calling me that. But I was working, I started working in 2001 at this small college in the Midwest. And I noticed that I was seeing the same issues coming in over and over. And that I didn't have a guidebook on what those issues were. There was nothing there. So I mean, in effect, I started thinking about writing the book I wished I'd had. You get wonderful training in your, you know, I have a master's degree. It's wonderful training about theory and how to ask questions and listen and all those good things. But there was no guide to like, this is what in general college students are going to bring into you that isn't like serious mental illness problems. Like mm -hmm. it's not about anxiety and depression. It's like kind of what normal stressors, how to take care of your body. Who are you? What do you value? How do you get to know how to take care of your thoughts and emotions mm -hmm. so that you can get through your day and be healthy and mm -hmm relationships, all the sections of my book. So I started to just be really curious about that and want to write, want to make sense of it and put it in one place and so that it could be really useful for students. So that's how I started. But then as the mental health crisis sort of kept growing, mm -hmm. I really thought it would be really nice to have another resource for students that so they weren't all just coming to the counseling center so they could have something before the counseling center so they could work on it on their own, have a great resource. So then I was driven by that need. I love that. I think like I say this a lot on this podcast because we have amazing coaches and therapists and authors on here and the best product is created from something that was missing and a need needed to be filled. And the person that witnesses it or goes through it themselves, they step up and they're like, we don't have anything like this. And then the most brilliant thing is born. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I've heard that my whole life. Oh, I wrote the book I wished I'd had. Now I can't believe I'm saying that, but it is true. Right. right? Okay. So why do you think that mental health in college students is declining? Because we're seeing this happen more and more over the years, aren't we? Yes, it's been going on for a long time, honestly. It, it's been going on for over 20 years where there's a decline. Oh, my God. People are really noticing it now because of the pandemic, but mm. it had been very, very seriously declining through all the teens. And there is a lot of reasons for that. I think there's somewhat of a breakdown of community and people feeling safe in their places, and there's also a lot of discord in our country that creates a feeling of less safety. And there's in 20, 30 years from now, maybe people will look back and have better understanding. But also, I don't want to just blame it on social media. But once social media happened, it sort of increased all these, oh, sure. it, it amplified all these things that were already happening. So mm -hmm. you could feel alienated, but then you could be feel 100 times more alienated, or you could feel lonely 100 times more lonely. So I think it's all kind of going in the wrong direction that way. It's like it's finally all catching up to us and the whole like social media thing. Like, yeah, you can feel alienated and alone. But if you have this Band-Aid on that's constantly distracting you because you're always just looking and swiping and liking and paying attention to who's doing it to you, it distracts you from the fact of like, oh, I really haven't had a conversation with another human, you know, all day or no one's calling me, or I'm not calling anyone else, or it's making us very blind to that. And God, I couldn't even imagine being a college student right now. It's hard because it is, we're animals. We need each other. We need to be, yes. we need friends. There's a loneliness epidemic. So how do you counteract that? You make friends, you go out and you be awkward, which yeah. people hate that so much. And Girl, I'm in the dating world right now. And it's all about being awkward and having to go out and make friends, <laughs> just boys. Yes. It's awkward. You have to be vulnerable. You have to take risks. And guess what? It is easier to sit at home and scroll on your phone than do that, but it is not better. <laughs> so then there's this thing that we can go to so easily, like you said, the Band-Aid versus going out and doing that work to create real relationships and a real community. And the longest section of my book is the relationship section. Like that's where I just try to put as much info in there about how to have healthy relationships, how to keep trying, what to do, because that is really one of the bedrocks that'll make people feel less, I want to say make them feel happy. That's way oversimplifying, but to have a rich life and a meaningful life. you have mm -hmm. to. Have Let's talk about that more. Let's dive into relationships a little bit more because it is a, I don't want to say dying social skill. I don't know. I don't know. My daughter just signed up for her orientation the other day 
and they can bring a guest. So she wants me to go, which I would too. I guess I would would want my mom or something to go. She didn't. I went by myself, but <laughs> I would want that too. But she wants me to go. And I can see her struggling with going out and meeting new people and making and forming new relationships. But I've seen this in my kids every year with every stage. If they go to a new high school, if they went to a new middle school and they're like, I'm not going to know anyone. And I'm always telling them like, take it one day at a time who you don't even know right now, by the end of the year, they'll probably be your best friend. Right. And have that. That is one of the takeaways from the book from every section, though, is the baby steps matter and practicing matters. So showing up and eating meals, you know, with, I mean, she's already got a leg up because she's on a team that will have. Yeah. Not everyone will be her best friend, but she will know someone, a great social group with that team. But you also want to have friends off the team just to have balance in your life. But like, yeah, that practicing, like by the time you've had 10 lunches with a group of people, you're a lot closer. You don't feel so good, but you got to, you know, or don't feel like that feeling you want to have that you see, that you imagine. So yeah, like that keeping that persistence and keep trying. That's hopefully one of the takeaways from my book that there is no magic thing that happens immediately that we we want as an art culture is an instant culture. So I feel like I'm against that in my, in my book. Like there's no instant cure for anything. No. And practiced every day. (laughs) And that's all we know is instant right now. Like you can't swipe fast enough. Your internet can't do what it's supposed to do fast enough, but we translate that into our relationships and just, I just need to know everyone, or I just need to feel comfortable. And it doesn't work that way, especially for college kids and going into this brand new environment and not knowing people. And the brain, can we talk about the brain at this stage too? And like, it's not fully developed, especially in boys. (laughs) And again, these kids right now going off, they grew up with phones. They grew up with that that dopamine hit that the phone gives us. Just, it's like a pacifier in their hand all the time, which God, I hate saying this stuff out loud because I I deal with it with my own children and I'm pretty on top of it all. And I see that, but like this generation now going off to college, as much as I have tried, they're missing skills that was no problem before. Right. Right. People of my age are like, our parents dropped us off. They left. There were no phones. There was one phone on each dorm floor and you couldn't call out on it. You know what I mean? You can only get calls in. It was Kids wouldn't so, make it now. It was so radically different, but we didn't know any difference. So for us, it was fine. And there were no computers and, you know, yeah. you were looking at a, a book for a reference. I mean, it was just yeah. a page <laughs> basically, but at the same time, we, it was easier for us to be face to face and, and figure out like friends. So that's, that's a skill of, that I do try to really spell out in my book in different chapters, like what even kind of friends do you need? What are the steps to, how do you talk to someone? How do you listen? I have a whole chapter on listening. I think it's so important. Like if you're not listening to someone, you can't really be a friend with to them. <laughs> you have to listen to them. <laughs> no, I love that you're spelling this out for them in a book and they have this like People just don't realize how important this is. How can we start preparing these kids now before they're gone? Like, what should we be doing or shifting and changing in the home or with our relationships or communication to help them? I mean, keep open communication lines. That is just so important. I mean, it sounds like you do an amazing job of that. And I really do believe that the role modeling of parents, like when students see, oh, yeah, my mom goes out and sees friends or she, has relationships with people. She's not just on her phone all day. Like she's going out Mm -hmm. and talking to a friend or her friend came over crying and she was there for her or she's going out and having fun and just hanging out. They're watching you very carefully. Like that's, that's a huge thing that parents don't realize like, oh, they're, even if they, if you think they're not watching you, they are watching you. (laughs) I'm so glad you're saying that because I talk about that a lot too with my community and my bomb moms about how important it is for you to be the role model for them. We talk a lot about health and fitness, but it's all about mental health and mindset too, and self-love and self-worth. And I'm like, I love this conversation because you can't tell your kid to go off to college and make friends. And they just see you sitting at home with absolutely no friends. Like, it's not fair. It's not fair to them. It's not fair to you. And then to like push them into something that they haven't been witnessing or you haven't exactly. been modeling. Right. 
It's true. It's real. I used to see in my office, students would come in and one of the things they were burdened by is they were worried about their mom or dad because they had left and they were kind of the person that heard that were there. A lot of times it's bright, sensitive kids, which we want to have, right? <laughs> if there's something going on at home that they're worried about, they're not going to stop worrying just because they went to college. That's going to be a piece for them. So anything parents can do to live your healthiest life is such a huge gift to them. Because then they can kind of worry about themselves more and building their friendships. And and I guess the other piece of that is to remind, you can be honest with your kids and say, I'm working on friendships. Like, I feel like a couple of them are going really well and a couple of them are struggling with and I'm working on it. So it's like, oh, in our family, we work on friendships. Easy, like that's a real thing too. Like it's not all magical <laughs> little little hearts going all the time like friendships are hard too oh my god I love that we're saying this because just last weekend I have a fairly new friend I actually met her like at a podcast convention and then we realized that oh my god we're both in California like she's an OC we're like not that far away and I shared that with my kids like I have a new friend then shortly after maybe like a week or two later we went to dinner and they're like who are you going to dinner with and I'm like my new friend my new girlfriend you know from and they're like oh and I didn't realize, I don't know, my, my kids hear me like going out with friends or like, you know, like on a Friday night or something, but the times in between are really important. And then just this weekend, I went to her house and we were going out for her birthday and I'm like, Hey, you guys, you're going to be at your dad's, but can someone come back, you know, take care of the dogs, let them out. And they're like, where are you going to be? And I'm like, I'm going to have a girl sleepover. <laughs> and they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to stay the night at her house. We're going to go out and stay the night at the house and I have to drive back. And they were like, you are? And I'm like, yeah, it's going to be so fun. And and we did. We like put pajamas on and we watched a movie later. And that's amazing. I, I didn't mean, realize. you gave them such a huge gift. I would like to say even, it's not even more than friendship, but equal to friendship is having joy and fun in your life because our messaging can also be like, you have to be productive all the time. I mean, students get mixed messages in college where you have to study and just break your back. And you also have to party and in another way, break party too hard and study too hard. So for you to in, put that joy in there, I just love that. Like, this is our journey. Like we do get to enjoy our journey as well. Enjoy in it. So I love that <laughs> for your kids to witness that. Today's episode is brought to you by Million Dollar Body Labs. Are you pushing the limits in the gym and in life, but finding it hard to recover and stay on top of your game? Well, guess what? I have something to help you. It is called the Day and Night Shred Stack. You guys have heard me talk about this before and it is time to jump on board. We're talking about Fast Aid BCA Supplement and the Complete Restore. Did you know that branched chain amino acids can boost your muscle recovery up to 33%? Fast Aid BCA Supplement is packed with these essential nutrients, reducing muscle soreness and fatigue and helping you power through your workouts in stressful days. Imagine the edge where you'll gain your muscle repair faster and your performance peaks like never before. And we do know that life doesn't stop when the gym does right and for those nights when your sleep is a luxury complete restore has your back this incredible supplement aids recovery even when your sleep is less than ideal oh yes who doesn't need that it's designed to support your body's natural healing process so you wake up feeling refreshed and ready to conquer the day and to all the moms balancing busy schedules the professionals striving for excellence and the athletes chasing their best personal best your body and mind deserve the best support possible million dollar body labs day and night shred stack is your secret weapon. Go to the show notes, use the code, use the link and save. Put in bomb mom at checkout. I got your back. We got a discount code for you. Back to the show. I didn't even realize it like until just now they're like, oh, this is actually a really important thing for them to witness. And especially for my oldest going off to college. I, oh my God, I have so many questions for you. <laughs> does, does anything else come to mind like that you can remember that you dealt with when you worked at the college and like other questions and concerns that you saw? I'm glad that you said that you saw a lot of kids struggling with worrying about like what was still going on at home. And I'm like, oh my God, what else there did is, you hear? Yeah, there's another big one that can go, there's just a ton of variety on this. But I mean, I remember it because it just stood out to me so much is like when parents are texting too much and kind of leaning on their kids too much. It can happen like if your kid wants you, is texting you and wants texts, it's not a problem then. Like this is only if, you know, there's some parents that are kind of putting, inserting themselves into their kid's life a lot more than is really healthy for the kid. 
And as a as an 18, 19, 20 year old, it's really hard at that age to say to your parent, hey, <laughs> can you not text me as much? It interrupts my day. I'm trying to focus, I'm trying to study, or I'm just trying to have lunch with someone and get to know them, which is pretty, is a hard thing as we were just talking about. And then, you know, to get these texts can be a situation that's hard for students. So that's something that I always try to recommend to parents and students is like, hey, this is a new era that's starting. Let's try to be really aware of how much texting or calling, like when does it work? How's it going? And having those open conversations about it, because it could be that it's absolutely perfect from the get-go and like you both love how much you're texting and calling and there's no problem there because don't fix what's not broken. If it's fine, it's fine. But to like have some check-ins about it, like is this amount working for us? So just have that communication. Yeah. And how important. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Communication about communicating. Exactly. Well, that would probably be a really good conversation to have as you're dropping them off or they're going away of like, how often would you like to communicate? And, you know, I'll probably tell my daughter, like, you can text me anytime, day or night. I don't care what time it is. Like, you call me, you need me, like, I'm there. But then also maybe telling her, I don't know, like, I don't want to bug you too much. Like, maybe we talk every Friday at three, you know, on the phone. And, you know, like, what do you want for mom? And you can have that talk now, but she might um, one month in say, hey, this is, I didn't know because I wasn't here. So now this is what I think would be better. And it might be like, I want to talk to you Tuesdays and Thursdays and Sundays, you know, you don't know what it's going to be. Yeah. Being open to the the changes as well. Yeah. Very good point. And yeah, that can definitely shift a lot. So I remember, so college, right? That's the time where so much experimenting happens. A lot of people lose their virginity during college. <laughs> Unfortunately, it happens a lot earlier in high school, but a lot of people, that's where that takes place. A lot of people get into their first relationships, drinking. A lot of people, that's when they really start partying and being in part of that environment. How can we support them during this time? Because I know there's a lot of parents that I don't know if we're like the generation that started that of like the helicopter parenting and they want to like just micromanage a lot of their kids' lives. I see this a lot in some of my daughter's friends. And I'm like, dude, when they go off to college, you're going to have to like let them go. Any suggestions on how we can manage that, you know, with those hard conversations around them finding their identity while they're gone? Right. Well, I do. My whole chapter on substance use is reflection questions. It's not telling anybody what to do. It's Mm -hmm. reflecting on what are your values? What do you get out of it? What is your family values? So, and once again, I think the studies do still show that the most important voice is the voice of the parents about drug and alcohol use. Mm -hmm. So if you say, hey, you know, I'm not against drinking, but I'm really, really against over drinking, like, you know, have a buddy. So you have a limit, you know, or whatever you can try. I mean, not just try, like those are really like essential conversations to have. It doesn't mean it all work that way. A lot of time you learn from experience when you're a young person. So Mm -hmm. expect that too. And then in terms of healthy sexuality, I have a whole chapter on that, which also has reflection questions and just different, different ideas about how to think about things and try to get to know your own values and what you really believe because hello, peer pressure and hello, peer perceptions. I think I have in the book that like, is it okay to (laughs) speak openly? Like, oh girl, we talk about everything on here. So go. (laughs) I'm going to say the person that got laid last night, they're running up and down the hall saying they got laid last night. The people that are playing Monopoly and watching movies aren't running up in the hall saying, I didn't get laid last you know <laughs> Right. Me? Like, so the perception becomes, oh, that's what everyone's doing. They're all out there doing this. Whereas that is not statistically true. But you don't know those statistics when you're young. Right. It's just the, the noisy voices is what people perceive is happening mm-hmm. versus like what's actually really happening. Yeah. That's a very big pressure. You know, that kind of FOMO thing is very big pressure on young people. It's on all of us, you know, but it's really big on young people. So trying to help remind them, like, this is your values. You know, this is our family values. Like, this is how we view this. There's a lot of right answers to that question. Like it is, there's no one right way to do things. So no. And your kid may end up having different values than you have, which may be, you know, a shocker in any direction. Right. So more liberal, more conservative, it's all over the place. So trying to 
once again, keep the communication open or say, you know, if you want to be private about this, you can also be private about this, but I'm here, you know, I want, want to be able to be someone you can talk to about right. whatever's going on. So. And I think that conversation about how things that you do at that age, because you're an adult, kids go off to college and you are 18 and older typically, and the choices that you make now will affect the rest of your life. You know, it's not like when you're a kid, you can get away with doing some dumb things, you know, and it's like, I did it when I was a kid. But man, once you're older and choices that you start making in college, that can really veer which path your life takes. I mean, I know people that like got DUIs or did have really bad sexual experiences and, and didn't know their values or whatever. And you can like pinpoint, you can pinpoint that's when their life changed and they started going on that path. You know, and I, I think that, again, those conversations are really important to have and just that awareness around it and to be like, hey, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, like, call me, let's talk about it and and telling them, I love you no matter what. Yes. Yes. That is beautiful. Because think about like, if, if you're a young woman and there's, it's, this is so common, like there's some kind of sexual assault or something that didn't go well, like, and you're. Mm -hmm. Stated. I mean, I heard that a lot in my office as a as a counselor. They come in and they're trying to get help, and it's it's really really hard. And yeah, people saying I could never tell my parents because I wouldn't want to hurt them. I oh. wouldn't want them to feel sad. You know, that's oh. that that's you know a beautiful young human being, but it's also like actually your mom would probably really want to be there for you and help you. But I don't say I didn't say that because I wanted just to be there for them in the moment. But. Right. You as a parent can say, you know, whatever it is, like, I can handle it. I'm strong. Like, I want to be there for you when you need me. Mm -hmm. It don't happen, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But these situations and things that happen, that too can be like a starting point, a pivotal point for like their mental health. Yes. You know, and if, if a female experienced something like that, it was like at that moment, like the depression set in because Absolutely. she didn't communicate. And then it's downhill it from there. All sorts of stuff feeling unsafe everywhere, you know, it just spreads out without getting an intervention of some kind. And it doesn't right. have to be fancy, but it it does have to be like not holding it in is, is going to not work. So. Yeah. Okay. So like, what are some top things that students can do today to improve their mental health so we can get them on the right path before they even go? Well, in my book, I have a lot, you know, that's the whole book. I know. You're <laughs> like, where do I begin? Where do I start? <laughs> Give me three. One thing that... Most most people do understand like that, you know, moving my body every day, getting the right sleep, those kind of things are helpful. That's in our culture. I have a lot of ideas for that in my book about that directly um, correlate to college. But I also think that maybe it's less common in our culture to understand how self-awareness of your thoughts and self-awareness of your emotions and labeling emotions, how those are so important. Because you, I've had students kind of argue, like, well, why does it matter what I'm thinking? It does matter because if you're thinking something like I'm such a loser or I don't belong here, those thoughts are, are going to really get in your way. So I have lots of chapters on how to work with those, those issues, how to start to know, yeah, oh yeah, this is what I'm thinking or getting in touch with, oh, what's that feeling? Oh, I'm feeling really afraid today. I'm feeling really scared about going, which is very normal. <laughs> but so identifying that and then what do you choose to Instead of fighting, oh, I shouldn't feel afraid, saying, oh, I really actually am feeling that. It's okay. What do I want to do with that? You have a lot of choices. So, I mean, that is a lifelong process, honestly, but it's really, really helpful to start in college because it's so intense and you're having all these, you know, this huge transition to being an adult and also to not your daughter because she's on scholarship, but a lot of people are putting a lot of money into college. So it's a a financial risk and there's a lot of pressure to like find that perfect career and figure things out depending on where you come from so it's a lot of stressors so understanding what you're feeling and coping with that in a healthier way mm -hmm. is just wonderful to I love with. that it, you know and like people just they don't take the time to stop and like become aware of your thoughts and your feelings and emotions and I talk about with my clients in my group about separating facts from feelings and I, I do that with my kids as much as I can too, of like, okay, facts. Facts is something that they can like prove in a court of law. You know, that you, you're the lawyer, you're presenting this to, to the judge. It's straight up facts. And guess what's not going to work in a court of law? Your feelings. 
you know, well, I feel and separating those, I think, can really help. And, and this would be great for college students to even be practicing before they go. But this would be great to be like, OK, I'm really scared. Everyone's going to think I'm dumb. I'm never going to make any friends. OK, how can you prove all that in a court of law? You won't. You'll fail <laughs> because that's just all how you feel. Right. And you have no proof that you're not going to make any friends. You have no proof of this. And it's not dismissing it. You're allowed to still feel it. You're allowed to still be scared. Our big thing in our house right now is like, do it scared. Dude, I love that, I love that you're scared. I'm scared all the time, every day with a lot of things. <laughs> but we're going to do it anyways. We're just going to do it scared now. I love that. It's so much. It's like you can still be scared and do the thing that you know is right or that your values want you to do or that like your dreams want you to do. Yeah. Just listen to the fear and then shut down and don't do it. That's just such a waste. That's such a hard thing. I mean, there's there's times where, but they're kind of more rare times in our society where you want to listen to your fear and run. Mm -hmm. But that's more the exception than the rule. Like yes. if a speeding car is coming towards you, you want to get out of the way. But we're not really talking about that. We're talking about, we're about writing a paper or putting your ideas out there or mm -hmm. something like that. You don't is a paper tiger. I've called it. Just yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was say, I was thinking the same thing. You must have just read my mind with tiger because I'm like, we're not really being chased by a tiger anymore. But our brain doesn't know that. Exactly. Our nervous system doesn't know that. Oh, my God. This is great. And I hope parents are like all taking notes because, again, parents need to I'd be able to identify their facts from their feelings. They need to be able to be like, OK, I can't go and tell her to do this one. I have no clue how to do this. Real quick, can we talk about the importance of taking care of your body during college? Now, I'm psycho. And <laughs> when I went to college, I literally, I, I played volleyball as well. But then in off season, I literally organized my classes. And I'm so glad I did this. And I have the knowledge to like share to my daughters. But I would schedule my classes where I would give myself like a two hour gap. And I would go to the weight room, I would go in the arena and run the, the bleachers, you know, and I even did this when I was done playing. And I really had to get over the fear and the fact that like, it was the only girl a lot of the time in the weight room and it was all the football team. But that I think kept me going mentally to be able to handle and tackle the next class, you know, with the drama, it like, it did so much for me. So back me up, Mia, and tell them back why this is so important. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll be glad to know the first section of my book is called Your Body, Sleep, nutrition, movement, substance use, quiet time. And then I have a another chapter on your personal body culture, which is all the other stuff that didn't fit into those okay. other chapters that are really important. So they're not so jokingly would say to a student that would come into my office, I can't help you if you haven't slept, if you've only slept for one or two hours. For real. Let's help your mental health. So yes, 100% agree. What's kind of hard in our culture is there's perceived to be one right way to do it, one right way to exercise or move or one, there's the right nutrition plan or this. I think people are fighting like I have to be like, honestly, it would be like, like you, like you're like that pinnacle example of a great athlete and who cares about her body. But you want to know what? There's a lot of right ways to do it. Like you can go for a walk for an hour. Yes. You don't have to go to the weight room. You can just go for a walk with your friend and talk and, or you can go dancing, you know, salsa dancing or any kind of, you know, hip hop, any kind of dancing that you can do gardening move, you know, which mm -hmm. is not as easy for, I would say first years to find, but like there's ways to, <laughs> to do that in college yeah. or any kind of movement that yes. works yoga, whatever. So find what you love and it's in the scheduling part of my book at the end of your time. Put it in your calendar. When you put your classes in where you know you have to show up, also put in when you're going to move your body. Yes. To make it a priority because otherwise it's really hard to make it work. Mm -hmm. And also some people like to do stuff all by themselves. You know, they just, they're going to put their music on and that's how they, other people like, you know, to be with a friend or a couple friends and go to a class together, you know, uh, some Zumba or whatever. And other people want a goal. Like I'm going to run that 5k. There's no wrong answer. It's no. the only, it's just do what you want. So yes, a hundred percent behind it. And the big and sleep people, people come to college thinking, oh, I'm not supposed to get good sleep in college. I'm supposed to be working all the time. And that is in, that's insane is a strong word, but it's insane. I guess insane. Your knowledge, you're talking about neuropsychology, like you can't learn unless you've slept. 
you have to like, that's when your knowledge gets encoded in your brain. I don't really understand all oh, neurons are going to work together better when you sleep. That's when you hear your body. And so it's a mistake not to get good restorative sleep pretty much every night if you can. You know, you can break the rules occasionally, but you really want to have the norm be sleeping. And of course, nutrition and listening to your own body because you're fueling your body so that you can learn. And if you think about how hard your brain is working, it's like upload biology or calculus right. or history, you have to have everything firing. So mm -hmm. get your, all your nutrients. And I love it. So I totally agree with you. I couldn't agree more. Well, just circling back what you said about putting it on the calendar, I tell my moms, which they need to be doing to be able to pass this on to their kids and dads, that I treat my workouts like important business meetings that you can't cancel. That you, you just, you don't cancel, you don't, you need to reschedule, you can shift and move it, but we don't cancel. And so I'm so glad that you said that to be doing that in college. What great practice too, to be able to just, this is what you do. This is how you do it later. And okay. Now I feel like I'm totally bragging, but this is a true story. <laughs> As you were saying, like find things that you like and, and dance or yoga or whatever. I'm going to go out on the limb and say that if, if, there's something that you want to do and no one else is doing it, start it yourself. Yes. I love that. And I did this. <laughs> Good. I'm over here. <laughs> I totally did this. I actually kind of forgot. I just got to tell this with my, to my kids. In college, I grew up doing martial arts and all of that. And I was certified in like kickboxing and I taught classes super early. Like when I was in high school, I trained my high school team. Like we'd have practice and then they would bring them to the gym and I would teach classes and train them there. Yeah. And so I had all this knowledge. And when I got to college, I was like, I really want to do kickboxing. Like it's such a great stress reliever and kicking and punching and all this stuff. And, and they didn't have anything. And then I was like, well, can I start something? And they're like, sure. And they let me pocket the money. Wow. So That's I had this small gym. It was reserved for me. They gave me like a music box, whatever. I brought my music. I choreographed routines. And then I had staff signing up like teachers and people that work there. It was for students and staff. And I taught massive kickboxing classes. And, and I'm like, I made money. Mom, I could eat. And I got to do my stress reliever. <laughs> and I would just like to say, I, I had heard from students over the years how helpful kickboxing was to them when they were it's like there's something about it that helps process trauma and it helps you feel really strong and powerful. So I love that you did that because you probably gave a lot of really, beside physical health, you probably gave a lot of good mental health to people too. Yeah. Annoyingly, but like. Yeah, so that, everyone was very sad when I graduated and it ended. They're like, who's going to take it over? <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I don't know. So I, I'm curious if they kept that going after me. I, I don't know. I don't know what happened to that new. I think we called it like an intramural program. I think they added it like that. And yeah. Oh, Mia, this was just phenomenal. Where can people get this guide? Where can they get the book? It is available wherever books are sold. I love um, it. It's on Amazon, Target, uh, Barnes and Noble, oh, bookstore, bookshop.org. I have a website. That's my name. And I yes, think you tell us your it. website. Where can people it's find my you? Name, and follow? .com. It's a hard one to spell, but it'll be on your site. Yes. <laughs> and, yeah. And well, it's, it's in a lot of local bookstores too. So. Okay, cool. Did you do an audio version of this or is it paper only? There's an audio version and an e-version. Because a lot of people want to listen. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's very true. We will put the links to everything in the show notes and to your website. So you guys, if you're driving and listening, you'll have access to that. Don't worry about that. But this has just been phenomenal. I'm so glad that you came on and we had this conversation because going off to college, it's a real thing. And I, I feel like we equipped people with, for their kids to, you know, to start preparing <laughs> yeah. that, you know, like all these things for parents parents to be listening to and to start putting into practice, it's going to help their kids. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're great. I love uh, it. <laughs> you guys check out the show notes, get the book, gift it. We have send them off with it. So they are prepared. Uh, this is great. Everyone stay safe, stay healthy until next time. This podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regards to the subject matter covered. This is given with the understanding that neither the host practice of the practice or the guest are providing legal, mental health, nutritional, or other professional information. If you need a professional, you should find one.